My body was here, but my spirit was gone for about six or eight weeks. And that was the most beautiful time. I was just up there laying in the arms of an angel, literally across the arms of an angel for about six to eight weeks. And I just asked the most amazing questions and they'd give me the answers. So that was a huge turning point for me. Those answers still work because I was able to write all that down. And that's what propelled me, really propelled me into this new work that I do. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to have my beautiful friend, Monica Murray, join us today. And Monica is a, an, an intuitive, a intuitive guide and a soul helper. And I know that that's kind of a vague description because she does so much. She's an amazing human being. And I was lucky enough to run across Monica at a spirit fair. And Monica was the first person to give me a, a tea leaf reading, which was absolutely amazing and fabulous. And she won my heart at that time. <laughs> so, so Monica, I know you have so many things to talk about, you know, and so many different gifts that you have. Um, so first of all, thank you for being here and welcome, welcome to the show. And would you mind giving us a little bit of a background and a history of what all all you do and what your fabulous gifts are? <laughs> Professionally, right? Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> let's, let's keep it narrowed down, right? Yeah. <laughs> it all blends together some days. I know, I know. Um, well, I just have always been that weird little kid that was doing things that um, I didn't realize till I was older that other people weren't doing all this uh, spiritual work. And, and yes, I was raised in the church, Southern Baptist, and I had a heavy influence from my grandmother, my mom's mom, um, who was raised Quaker. And there wasn't a, a friend's church, a friend's house near where she lived when she married, but she kept that ideology and that faith in her. And it's such a fair thing that um, it it's just was a beautiful thing that I learned and she taught me. And the, the beautiful, really fabulous thing that I find remarkable nowadays is that when I was a toddler, like a little girl on her lap, we'd have our quiet time. And she was, what I didn't know then is she was teaching me to meditate. And so I have meditated almost every day of my life since I was a very little girl. And you download so many insights from um, when you're connected with something bigger than you are. And it, I just did it when I was very innocent and didn't know, you know, to interfere with that information. I just, she taught me how to do it. And I thought, this is great. And I have implemented that into my life over the years. So some fabulous things have come to me. And um, then I, I had mainstream jobs. I one time had a real corporate job with a cubicle and everything. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that just didn't, wasn't me, but it was, a, it was a good job and I loved it because I was helping a lot of people. And um, I just have always had that creative artistic thing in me where I was very open-minded. I love to hear different ideas. And this grandmother I was talking about, I studied all the world religions and I got into that early on. And I just started, she taught me that the common denominator with there was just kindness and love and respect and compassion for each other. And no matter what I, what, thing or philosophy I got into, I, I honed in on that. So that's how I can help my clients is I just meet them where they're at to the best of my ability. And no matter what they say to me, it doesn't really shock me, which is like, okay, well, let's get started. Yeah. And over the years, of course, I've studied a lot of holistic practices and different methods. And, and really my big, big thing has always been to blend mainstream with alternative, whether that's medicine, business, whatever. I've, I've always taken the mainstream stuff and there's answers in all of that. And I've tried to blend it together to find the best answers for myself and my clients. Yeah. So I'm going to have you add on to that a little bit. So okay. let's get a little bit more specific because the experiences that I've had with you um, mm -hmm. is that, well, first of all, the tea leaves, and <laughs> that's just, that's just one aspect of all of these things, these tools that you use. Mm -hmm. So you, I've seen you use tarot cards, um, you just intuitive, you just know things. So can you be a little bit more specific on these different tools that you use? 
Yes. Um, over the years, I, I love to study. I've always been curious about things and I've loved to study and have, you know, uh, again, mainstream degrees like from University of Oklahoma and different places. But then I also get other certifications like a Reiki master and, and different traditions. And it's whenever something popped up in my life, I became my first um, client, my first subject. So I would go learn and then help myself with that. And then I would try to talk to friends and people that wanted to learn more about it. And then it went, it would branch out into the clients. But the, for me, you have to, I have to continue to keep learning. And so um, I just kind of keep incorporating these things. So during the week, I have a, a practice, a private practice where I see clients. And nowadays, since COVID, post COVID, we do a lot of stuff on Zoom and I have people all over the world that can Zoom in. So that's wonderful. And I can reach them in ways that I couldn't before with a brick and mortar office. And that's not really necessary these days. So then I would study different things that would help me. And then I would pass that on because I'm always looking for universal truths that apply to everybody. They, they, it's always something beautiful that comes out of this. They, they stand the test of time. They're, it's not a fad. They're not going to go out of style. So whenever I find a protocol or something that's um, helpful and it has got some universal truths in there, then I kind of hone that in and I, I work with that. And a lot of times I find a little bit better way that works for me. And so that could be tapping. That's my own form of tapping that I came up with to um, get into the person's thoughts and their beliefs and things, particularly things that might be inaccurate and kind of rewire those. Because what I've learned is if we can put something in our brain, we can also change that and put something different in there yeah. and yeah. live from that new place. And I, I love to work with ancestral systems is what I call it. I originally um, learned through a course called um, Family Constellations. But again, I, I knew things about my clientele that I already knew what I knew. And so I tweaked that a little bit <laughs> and customize it for the for the clients. And then um, just all kinds of anything alternative and mainstream medical, like when I'm doing tapping, that might be considered an alternative uh, practice. But yet I also work with um, a doctor that works with the neurological and the way our, our brain functions. So I back up what I'm doing with clients and then she gets the hardcore scientific evidence and we talk about it. So I, I love it when the results are effective. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and that goes into mediumship and, and all past life things. Every, you know, you never know where the hiccup is lodged. <laughs> well, and, and again, you, you cover a broad spectrum, spectrum. But I also want to throw in that Monica is very well known in our part of the country and renowned for her ethics and, and her professionalism and who she is. And it's one of the reasons why. I, well, what, just one of the many reasons why I respect you so much, and I'm, I'm thrilled to know you. Um, and again, she has so many different gifts and talents and abilities that can help us grow in a way that we're really looking at now in this spiritual growth that we're trying to, we're, you know, there's so much conversation and we understand this so much more now today than we did even five years ago about how important it is to shift our way of thinking and mm -hmm. to let go of some of these past ancestral traumas and stuff that you had mentioned in order to move into this place of spiritual growth mm -hmm. and enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing what you do. Um, so with that being said, <laughs> um, how, how did you begin your spiritual journey? Because you'd mentioned, you know, like with your grandmother and learning how to meditate as a child, mm -hmm. but how did this become like, you know what, I want to think I want to get out of the corporate world and I think I want to do this for my living now. What, mm -hmm. what happened there? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I saved my money and I had a, I had an idea that I wanted to open a spa. And so I saved my money. I went and got, you know, whatever I needed to get. And I planned for three years of no income before I um, left that corporate job. And I went back to school, got the certifications that I needed, got everything lined up and opened the door. And just, I really love skincare. And I, so I would get into that with the clients and we'd talk. And so then I was in, uh, did that for many years, had a beautiful clientele. And then I, I was unfortunately in an accident where mobility and standing and all that was difficult at the time. And so that, that's a job where you're moving around a lot and standing and all. And so I just talked to my clients because 
because they they're friends, you know, they, over the years, they'd become friends. I, every month or a couple of weeks when they'd come in, oh, how are the kids? Oh, I, you know, watched them go through college, <laughs> you know? And so these were really friends more than clients even. And so I'd say, well, what, what am I going to do now? Cause I'm not ready to just, you know, sit around, and do nothing. And so they said, Oh, Monica, we loved your facials and your skincare, but we really came just to talk to you every month. <laughs> And I went, oh, <laughs> so I thought, what can I do? And I and I realized early on that I looked at spirituality differently than a lot of people in the area of where I grew up and where I currently live in Oklahoma. And I I respect all religions, all faiths, philosophies, all that. But uh, I was raised in the Baptist church, went there every time the door was open. So I have a good base on that. But I also knew that I look, I love Buddhism. I love all these different philosophies and religions out there. And so I thought, what can I do with this? And so I just really decided, let me see if I can build a clientele with helping people find their own way. So how, how did I learn to connect to that source, what I call God, but whatever other people want to call that a higher intelligence, or maybe they don't believe in it at all, but I believe it's up there somewhere. And it's available for us to, to uh, like you study the Akashic records extensively. There's this information that's available. And I thought, how can I teach people to uh, connect with that and, and stay with that, like on a daily basis, every day, like, um, and I, I really just worked on that, like how to give that to people in bite-sized pieces that that don't offend uh, their beliefs, that doesn't break their moral code, all those things. How can I keep all that intact for them, but yet them see that maybe this over here might help you in this particular situation. And that's where I really honed those skills then. And, and um, I just, um, there's a place I like to go called the Osage Forest of Peace. It's out in the Osage Hills here near Tulsa. And um, they have a round chapel out there with these windows that look out over the forest. You can watch the sunrise and it's beautiful. They meditate out there three times a day. And so you have to take your shoes off when you go, or they ask that you take your shoes off when you enter that chapel, just as honor and, you know, just to be, uh, it's a sacred space. Mm -hmm. And so I came home one time and I was telling my husband about that. And he says, Monica, you walk around every day in life with your shoes off. And I thought, isn't that great? Let me teach other people how to do that, to just walk through their day with being connected, but yet still living the life they want to live in the real world, in the mm -hmm. physical realm. Yeah. So is there a defining moment that led you just to discover your unique gifts or was do you think that that was it? I think I was kind of born with a lot. You know, I was I was the quiet little kid that loved to sit in my room or in a quiet place outside and read all the time. And I've always been just a voracious reader and curious about all. I've traveled the world over. My dad used to say, if Monica's looking at a globe or an atlas, you better just go pack your bags because <laughs> we're going somewhere. <laughs> And you, you just learn so much about people in life. And, and so I've always had that as my base. And then there have been some significant turning points in my life that um, just led me to that next step in what I call soul evolution or my growth. Mm -hmm. And um, I just have gone through so many processes. And, and to me, the way I've processed that as quickly as I think humanly possible that I could do it was when there's a red flag or something's a little sticky and most, a lot of people would run for that. Well, to me, that's a sign for me. That's a red flag or a guidepost. And I run toward it because I want to see what's going on here. Why is this not smooth? Why, what's the hiccup? And it's, it's in me. What am I resisting or what inaccurate belief do I have about that? And if those are my guideposts along the way, and I'll tell you, it's, it goes like leaps and bounds when I do that. Yeah. So, because this is a good learning tool for people. So when you're talking about something that looks like a red flag and you recognize whatever this flag is, give me an example of a red flag. Oh my goodness. Um, well, um, a lot of, um, like when I'd have to make uh, decisions like at work or something in the business world, uh -huh. you know, I would always want to be, you know, I, I didn't want to be perceived as airy fairy, but I knew I could, um, 
I'm kind of funny and do silly things and have curly red hair and all this. So I have to kind of counteract that. And I had to bring that down. That's why I do tea leaf readings on the weekend sometimes at the shows because it's it's uh, fun. It's more, it's not as in-depth as we would do like in a private session, a private session during the week. So I had to find ways to communicate things because I was downloading stuff the way I could interpret it, but it was stuff I hadn't thought up myself. It was giving me these new answers or new things to look at. And I needed to find ways to communicate that to people. Mm-hmm. And so, and so <laughs> the red flags in life would be, um, you know, I've, I've learned this lesson. I feel, and to me, it's like a spiral staircase. Like we're going around and around and hopefully going up, <laughs> but there are landings along the way where I can stop and I consider that grace where I can take that in and practice it a little while. And um, I I try not to go back down. I try to see why am I resistant to this and keep going up that spiral staircase. So I'm constantly coming back to these lessons. And many times when I'm preparing for a class or something going on with the client, it it allows me the time to focus in before that meeting or that class and and kind of clean the slate and and check those hiccups within myself and so i'm always doing those little milestones and whenever i've run into a, a business question i don't know i'll ask what i call my counsel and um, they'll, they'll, somebody will pop in. One time Abraham Lincoln popped in and, and gave me an answer to a, a very tricky thing where I was kind of dealing, I was in the middle of two very opposing opinions on things at work. And I found that solution in that through that meditation. And I thought, okay, he's a peacemaker. He's had to resolve some pretty hectic issues with two sides. And so those things just come to me. And then I, I move on through that. And then, um, of course, there's always challenges in life. You know, when you have to make changes at different stages in life, people come and go or someone might pass or mm-hmm. um, things like that might happen. That was significant. Like when my parents passed and my spiritual mentor that I had for years passed a couple of years ago, that was a big thing to just learn to stand on my relationship with that higher, um, that grace. Yeah. And that I, I feel like the longer I've gone on the path, the fewer peers I have to call and talk to. You're one of those, <laughs> but there's a handful of those and it gets smaller and smaller all the time. And then of course, with the accident, um, that was about 10 years ago. That was a big shift in my job and closing down like three businesses. And just what am I going to do now? Or I didn't have to do anything, but that didn't seem right. So, I just really, especially in the beginning after the accident, there was about six to eight weeks there. And, and yes, it probably was a lot of drugs involved, but, but, <laughs> but medical prescription drugs. Yeah, but, yeah pain relievers. They said, Mike, this they were prescribed. Let's put it that yeah. way. <laughs> yes. And that was very odd for me because I don't do a lot of chemical stuff. And, yeah. and, um, I really just, my body was here. Yes, I was going to doctor's appointments and PT and all this stuff, but my spirit was gone for about six or eight weeks. And that was the most beautiful time. I was just up there laying in the arms of an angel, literally across the arms of an angel for about six to eight weeks. And I just asked the most amazing questions and they'd give me the answers. So that was a huge turning point for me. Yeah. I mean, who has, to me, that was as real as real. And, you know, to me, those answers still work because I I was able to write all that down. And that's what propelled me, really propelled me into this new work that I do. And I access that all the time now, but that was kind of an intense study period there. (laughs) Well, if I imagined myself or could see myself laying in the angel, in the arms of an angel for weeks, I think that, I think I would want to stay there. I think that's, that was an interesting experience. So one of the, that's, it's funny that you should even say that because what my next question is, is have you had any mystical or supernatural experiences that you can share with us? And I know you have a number of them, but that one in itself is a, is a pretty significant event. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about what that experience was like for you? Yes. And one of the things, um, Two that I um, I don't know if you believe in past lives or not, or the audience does, but <coughs> excuse me, it, I think it took me a while to learn all this, and I probably didn't do it in this 65 years since I've been here this time. 
So I would um, come to different stages in my life. And, and then one time somebody says, I think you've had past, past like, a, I mean, uh, near death experiences. And I said, no, I've never been close to dying. And they all kind of looked at me like, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, God and I chatted about it. And he asked if I wanted to come. And I said, no, not yet. I'll keep serving. And so back I went. And then I, I thought, okay, I need to think about that. Because several people have asked me that over the years. And I came up with five times when probably most people would have died. But in the, in its own way, I remember being asked, do you, do you want to come home, basically? And I was like, oh, no, I'll be fine. Send me back and I'll work some more. And <laughs> what did he say? The last time around was pretty significant and took a lot of time to recover from it. I kind of just said, okay, God, take me when you're ready. And please don't ask me because I, you know, I'll just say yes. <laughs> just take me next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, through all of those different experiences, I learned something that propelled me to the next thing. And they were significant. This last one about 10 years ago was probably the most significant that I've had in this lifetime. But I, I think I just had an agreement before I got here this time that I want to go as far as I can in this one lifetime. I didn't like the early childhood baby stuff, growing up stuff. And so can I just learn as much as I can while I'm here with this body this time? Mm -hmm. And I have whew, been given those experiences. Yeah. So can you share what you learned in the last experience? Well, really just um, for me, and I'm, I think this is everybody comes to this in their own way. I, I think especially light workers, you know, we say we want to, we want to be at the top of our industry. I'm not going to say I'm the best, but I'm one of the best in my industry. And so when I work with other light workers or practitioners or Reiki, whatever they do, and I always just say, where are you at on this journey and how can you best serve? And for me, it's all about service. And I can incorporate anything in my life into that service in my relationships, how I make money, how I, whatever I do, all these resources come together. I can still serve myself, my family, my community, you know, the, the globe or the universe. I even go, when I have spare time, I even go and work with the collective consciousness on that and put things in the savings account up there for somebody that might want that later. So it's, it's to me just um, all about service. And I think as you get further along on what I call that soul evolution or soul path, and it's not good or bad, it's just kind of different ends on the spectrum or the journey as we move along. And I think service comes into that once um, you get to a certain point in life. In the beginning, I think you're just trying to survive and figure it all out. But I think after you hit a certain point, you're leaning in towards service at every capacity. Yeah. And that gets more intense as you go along. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because when, when we encompass our gifts, our spiritual gifts, and we have a different understanding, you know, there's, there's some of us that have been introduced and, and we, we all know this, you know, it's like anytime somebody just learns something new and they jump in and they just are like, um, um, oh my gosh, I can't, I just lost the word for it, but it basically eat it up and, yeah. you know, very they, enthusiastic. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, they're excited and they just want to learn more and more and more. And then this, and I've seen this happen and it's human nature, you know, in so many different areas. When I was teaching massage therapy, I was the director of the massage therapy school, you know, people would learn something new and then they just wanted to share it with everybody. And, this, this is who we are in this type of work, in the spiritual aspect. It takes time to learn and find your footing. And a lot of what we do is trial and error because we're all so different. Mm -hmm. And we have to experience things, interactions with other people and, you know, seeing how things, uh, you know, un unfold. And, oh, well, maybe that was my head that said <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, when I first started doing the Akashic Records, I would do group sessions and the way that I have to open the records is a certain way. And I realized that the information that I was pro providing was me, not the group. But it took me a little bit to figure that out. It's like, oh, I think yeah. I better figure this out before I start yeah. sharing all my information. But what the point is, though, is that when once we be, once we're able to grasp our gifts, and we can recognize and we can really fine tune what we do. 
we find that our minds start step, stepping aside a little bit and we start living from the heart and the connectedness of all things. And I think that we just kind of move into that service mode mm -hmm. because we become the mouthpiece for whatever guides there are that are, you know, we're wanting to provide the message to the people that are receiving it. And right. however we, however we do it, I mean, I know that you have an abundant amount of tools. We all, we, we all have this thing within us in helping humanity. And it's this thing about, I want to help you relieve your, your pain. And I want to help you to move towards this knowing. And what we have to do is to help people look at that dark side and be able to give them the tools and the understanding of, no, you can let this go. Mm -hmm. And that becomes our mission is from that soul level of assisting others and helping them trans transcend, um, mm -hmm. move up, create a higher vibration and, you know, all of those things that we do. So do you have anything that's happened to you or that you've been able to provide that may have been something that was really kind of like that idea of that thought for you is like, holy cow, I really helped this person and didn't know I could. Is there, is there a story that really stands out that maybe you've assisted somebody that you had really incredible results with? Well, it, I shouldn't be surprised because I've asked for help and they never once have failed to give it to me. <laughs> but some of the things that I have been honored to sit before and witness happen and transform in clients has truly blown my mind. I mean, it was like, this was not Monica. I was just the hollow breed or the tool or the whatever the standing on that tightrope between those two worlds and trying to find a way to express that knowledge and that wisdom, really it's wisdom. And um, it wasn't of Monica. I can't possibly know all that and hold that in my brain. So I, I just am always surprised every single time. And and um, one I one thing I like the story I tell about the tea leaf readings. It's um, and that's more of a fun thing. It's out in the middle of a big open showroom, and you know it's fun. People would never sit down and like they would at a private session and just bare their soul to me. They don't even know who I am. So. Um, this is a fun way to kind of start that process with people to where they get to understand me. And so this girl, um, I believe we were in a college town when this was happening. Anyway, she was college age, young, young girl, just out on her own. And, and, um, she was just overwhelmed with life and studying and everything, you know, being an adult. And, um, she just, she sat down and, and uh, she's, I have people write down a question or something they'd like to focus on. And I tell them, we're going to go talk to the beloveds and, you know, anything you want to ask is fine. And, and uh, no judgment, no shame. We're just gathering data, you know, just getting information and um, they love you. There's no bad advice from this group. And um, so I get permission to do that. And then I go on their behalf and ask the question or the focus of intent there. And this girl, her question was, do I have angels and are they watching after me? I just feel so alone. I'm overwhelmed so many days. And so we kind of worked through the Oracle cards and they gave her an answer and she's feeling a little better about everything. And then the, the tea leaf reading comes, it's time for that. And it always backs it up. This is why I like for them to write down the question. It brings it out of the ethereal and rolling around in your head into physical plane where we can do something about it. And then the the cards start to unfold and then the tea leaf backs it up it's just amazing and then they have no doubt that they got the answer they asked for and it wasn't me so when i turned did my little thing and turned the cup over only leaves in the cup were down on the bottom and it was shaped like two angel wings and it was huge it was the whole symbol about this big <laughs> Normally it can be a little speck or a little tiny symbol. It was this huge set of angel wings. And I didn't even know what to say at that point. My voice was gone and I just turned the cup where she could see it and she burst into tears. And I'm like, are those happy tears, right? And, <laughs> and she got her answer. Monica didn't do anything except make her some tea. Yeah. And they answered for her. Yeah. And then we talked about it a little bit. It took her a minute to kind of gain her composure, but uh, she says, I have no doubt. I'll never have doubt the rest of my life yeah. uh, for eternity that they're here with me. And I was thinking, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you for letting that happen for her. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that 
I think that's a question that a lot of people ask, you know, that when they're feeling so lost and confused, they, we, we do have a tendency to question our guidance. And so what a beautiful answer for her and for everybody. Everybody needs to know that we have our support. So when you're talking about they, they, who, <laughs> the who, are, they. who, are, who are they? They is what I, in generic terms, I call it the council for people. And then I, I tell them how to find a name and change that title whenever they want to. But for me, it's my um, circle of trusted supporters. Mm-hmm. And there's main ones in there. Like uh, there's, every, most people have a deity. I call it God. Um, I think anytime I've ever checked on anyone, they have at least two angels, two guardian angels. One is the everyday stuff. And one is the big life lesson kind of stuff that kind of comes in, but they're with you from, I believe from the time your soul is created through eternity. Mm -hmm. And then there's other angels that people like to work with and and whatever it means to you. And then um, there's other, you know, some people like crystals or stones or plants or animals or whatever Mm -hmm. they, I think they, will come to the person however they can receive that information the easiest way to get the message across they will come and to that form and so for me I have a lot of people in my circle and I actually have a visual there's two chairs out in the middle of this big circle that's around me of spirits and guides and um, there's not a lot of humans usually in a circle because um, there we're not always able to give pure love and sound advice because of the human experience. But like my grandmother's in my circle and then my spiritual mentor ended up in my circle pretty much immediately when I, after mm-hmm. she had passed, I laid down just to rest because I'd been quite an ordeal for some time. And I just wanted to lay down and really rest my mind. And my counsel came in, which I always, they always have permission when I need them. I've kind of given them blanket permission to come in. And she was sitting in my circle like immediately she had just passed like probably less than an hour before that. And so there's sometimes some humans in there and I just call on them. Some of them are temporary. They'll come in. A specialist will come in. If I like Abraham Lincoln came in for me that time. Well, he's not there every time I go visit with my counsel, but he gave me the answer I needed that day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's they. (laughs) That's the they. That's my That's the circle day. of trusted supporters. Yeah. So if you if you were giving some advice to anybody, somebody that's just getting started on their spiritual journey, um, what what advice would you give? Um, this came up recently. My um, my niece on my husband's side, his niece, um, she's a, a counselor in Oklahoma City, and she sent me a, a little text I've got this girl you know because I'm I'm kind of the weird one in the family and so <laughs> and, <me too. laughs> and and my friend my cousin little cousin I call her little she's in her 20s but um she she's very mainstream religion and all this and that's perfectly fine that's you know she has a Christian counseling business and and um very well educated and and so she reaches a lot of people that are needing that help in that stage in life or whatever and so she's like Monica I got this girl she can't do church it's you know and I'm thinking okay she maybe she's had a bad experience or some crisis in her childhood that you know she said she she just won't walk into a church and that's period that's it so what do you suggest because she keeps using the word spirituality and I'm like okay big difference we got to learn between religion and spirituality they're both valuable but they're very very different one is a set of doctrines and usually specific to that religion and how that's been interpreted and then spirituality is the big blanket over all of that that is includes all those universal truths and that pure love and all those things and so I said if she's using that word then we, she probably needs to seek out something in the in the um, spiritual community and kind of the alternative. And it, it will not negate anything religious. It just gives you a different understanding of it mm-hmm. so that you can incorporate that in a way that you're not totally resistant to. It allows you to bring that into your situations and your, your way of handling things without, um, like I say, going against your own moral code or your own personal soul mission or whatever. But maybe she just needed some different terms and a, and a different type of relationship with that, um, mm-hmm. with that power. Mm-hmm. So what's the most unexpected lesson that you've learned on this spiritual path that you would share with people? 
Wow. Well, um, I'm not going to put you on the spot or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody, she didn't give me the question. So. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, the most profound thing I've experienced on this, um, I think, is just watching my clients and my friends and anybody that seeks help. And I might give them a little tidbit or a direction to head toward take baby steps this way and see how it works for you. And they there is always an answer it's the it's the intent and the process of asking for guidance and becoming willing to listen to that and it, and at least um try to think about it maybe you can't do it but maybe think about it and um challenge maybe something that's in your head and just temporarily set that aside long enough to try to understand this new concept and you can go pick that back up later or you can incorporate it in or whatever you want to do. But I think that's been the most profound thing for me is there's always a way. They always find a way to communicate and and help people along in their journey. And and um, they want peace and love. That's the big thing. Love to me is the highest frequency that I work with and um, that I've ever discovered out in the universe. And it it wins every time. It's the, It's our willingness that gets it there. Yeah. So you had mentioned um, some things that just triggered this question in my mind is that, you know, how what are some ways that we can receive information, receive that guidance? You know, so if you know, I think a lot of times people have a hard time recognize, ha recognizing how intuitive they are because they expect it to be in a certain yeah. form like yeah. the voice in my head or something. So right. what are the different ways that our guides can guide us in a situation like this when somebody's trying to work through their, their life? Mm -hmm. Well, it just depends on what works for you. If you pray, I, I think of praying for me as um, putting forth an intention or asking for something. And then meditation is zipping it and kind of setting aside what I think I already know and listening to that. And I, the way that it can be perceived, I think is different for everybody. And the further uh, along, the more like enlightened you are, the lighter you are and are able to set your own stuff aside. Um, you would, as you develop, people um, start to come into knowing about what we call the clairs. And so for every physical sense we have, um, we also have an ethereal sense that corresponds with that. And then there's even more. So like, like I can see my pen right here, but I can also visualize my pen in the mind's eye. So that would be the corresponding clair for vision. And there's one for sight and smell and hearing and all these things. Plus there's just a knowingness and a gut instinct. And it's not of me. It usually is something kind of, okay, I asked for an answer because if I already knew it, I wouldn't be asking. And so when it's not something I've already thought about or it's worded in a really different way or comes to me in a different way. So we have all these ways of perceiving things. There's at least 10 and I would say 12, 15, uh, numerous ways. And that can be customized. I think spirit customizes that for the individual. And so there, that's really, I always ask people are, that I think are kind of struggling with something. Are you, do you think you might be an empath? Have you ever thought about that? And once they get their head wrapped around that and I have a little checklist they can go through and it shows them, Oh, okay. I don't have to tell them that they figured out for themselves. And once we start to manage those things, instead of it being overwhelming and coming in at us from 10 directions or 12 directions, and it's overwhelming for the human condition. And once we start kind of managing those, and um, getting familiar, most people have one or two that are dominant and then the other ones come in every once in a while. And um, that the anxiety goes down. I've seen people come off their drugs. You know, I always say, talk to your doctor about this, but it might be time to ratchet that down. And they their life calms down. They're making better decisions. Their relationships are, are more joyful. They're at peace. Their work is more effective. And so once they realize how to perceive and receive that information, they start putting it into use in their life and amazing things start happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a key thing to, I, you know, people struggle so much about, I want to be more intuitive. I want to be more intuitive and we're such intuitive beings and we're not even aware of how much guidance that we're given on an everyday basis, just because we're so in our heads. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for sharing that. Um, in your opinion, um, what is the most pressing spiritual challenge facing the world today? Worthiness. Okay. Bill, explain that. It all comes back to pure love 
and worthiness is when you come to terms with that is a um, is pure love for your, the self for yourself and self care. And I always say we start here, like we were talking about training and stuff. Okay, that was for me to learn that. And then let's see if from my friends if it works. And then let's see if maybe the clients it works on. So and then some of it's just for me. That was just my experience. I needed to read that book or learn something. Mm -hmm. And so and it always boils down to worthiness. And it some in the beginning it might be the whole big thing. I'm not worthy of breathing. But then you start to realize maybe I have something in my head that thinks I'm not worthy of receiving money or being successful or, you know, that I can't look cute. So, you know, I don't take care of my body or whatever it is, however it manifests. It, it always comes back to that we're more powerful than we want to admit. And once we learn to manage that and become comfortable with it and treat it as a superpower and start using it, we're, okay but we're we're not gonna blow things up they're not gonna give us that much power <laughs> but <laughs> but um to me it's just that worthiness and some people start way behind the line on that yeah. and have to work their way up into it and then as light workers sometimes i talk to people and they're like i think i'm being called to do this or that how am i gonna do it and i'm like the idea or the concept wouldn't have come to you if they weren't entrusting that to you right Right. So how do you think that the best way to address worthiness is or lack of worthiness, actually? Try to identify it and, and uh, patterns are, and um, things that can recur uh, symbols. They jump out at me. And again, that's the early study with mediumship. Like I was talking to spirits and what some people might call dead people <laughs> that um, they just don't have a body, but the spirit moves on and it's very much alive. And so Whenever I'm working with that, um, I'm sorry, I lost the question, Lisa. Um, how, how um, gosh, now I've lost it. Um, when, when somebody's feeling unworthy. Oh, okay. How, how do we deal? How, how can we address that and shift that perspective? Okay. So these patterns jump out at me all the time. And when I see a pattern like, oh my gosh, she's dating the same guy again. He just has a different name. And, <laughs> or um, uh, they'll say something that has a, that kind of um, exposes this belief in them that they have like a bit of poverty mentality or something, or, or somebody told me when I was very young that I can't do this or whatever, or that I'm stupid, you know, or whatever it is. When I start to see those patterns in people, that's where I start to hone in on that and see if they'll focus on that. And we just kind of go through and reprogram that a lot. It's through tapping. Usually we can do that because you have to reset that brain. It's, that's why I call them reminders as opposed to affirmations, because um, maybe we've known a girl that's just absolutely beautiful and she doesn't believe that about herself. And she's doing all these crazy things because she doesn't believe that. And, uh, you know, she doesn't have she's not living up to her potential at work. She's dating people that, uh, you know, validate that she's not ready and all this. And so I always try to say. Okay, we got to reset that because I can put I am beautiful on a sticky note 300 places in your house on the car at work and your computer wherever you're not going to believe that until we go in you're going to defend that thing in your head as if it were the truth, even though it's inaccurate. And so until we take a good look at that to where you can let that go. It's like a beaver dam across the river. It, the light can't get through, the water can't get through. And until we kind of dislodge that a little bit where you don't have to defend that inaccurate belief, then you're able to tell me, here's what I want to think. Here's what I want to put back in there. Then we can insert that. And then I call that a reminder. So that's what you keep practicing. So those old neural pathways will fade out and you build new ones, the little synapses, they start talking to each other. And then you actually can build new neural pathways in your brain yeah. with the information that is more effective. Yeah. And which is this whole process that we're going through right now, letting go of those own belief systems. You know, and that's just one one simple example. You mentioned tapping, mm -hmm. and I, I like tapping. I'm I'm kind of a fan of the tapping thing. Um, yeah. But if people don't really know what it is, can you give a real short example of what tapping is? Sure. It's been around a while, and a lot of people know it as EFT. But um, I've studied all that. I I you know know all that and. A lot of times they give you a manual and you you have this issue and so you go back to page 34 and you say this really rote sentence that's in there for you that will help this situation 
And I, when I work with clients, I figure out what's that thing in your head when you're triggered, which is going to happen even after tapping, you're going to be exposed to that. What's that thing in that belief in your head that goes whoosh and you're over here at a car wreck or train wreck in a half a second. So what is that thing? And we identify that and really acknowledge what that is. And then, kind of go through some steps and then be willing to change that and kind of set that aside. And then what do you want to put in? And then you have a little space of grace. When the trigger happens, your new thought that you put in there, well, you'll run it through that. And then you've got that little gap there and where you're not on automatic pilot anymore. And you can say, how do I want to respond to that? Or maybe I don't even want to respond to that. And then you have an outcome that's more effective for you because it hasn't gone through that disbelief um, or that thing that wasn't helpful, it went through your truth. Mm -hmm. And then you were able to make a different decision than you would have before. Yeah. So there's, there's specific actions that yes. you do to, you want to, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's tapping, like we tap on different areas yeah. and uh, that's the same meridian system that they use in acupuncture. But instead mm -hmm. of putting the needles in there, we actually tap on those areas. It's just a very light touch and it kind of stimulates those areas. And that's what help resets, the, resets the brain yeah. because, um, you do have to go kind of through that little process, but the wording is what's so important and what's different about the way I do it. It's very customized and specific to that client on that day. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I do, I highly recommend it. I, I think that it's, it's a great tool to assist us in letting go of those past, past belief systems. And that stuff was buried, excuse me, that, that stuff is buried in our subconscious. We couldn't get to it if we tried right. other than having somebody help you identify that and work through it. Cause it's hiding. It doesn't want to be dislodged. Yeah. And this letting go of this whole belief system thing and the old conditioning and the old patterns, past life trauma, all that stuff that, you know, that we deal with and that we're having to let go of. Sometimes we need tools and, you know, and that's, that's why you're here. Um, because you have so many tools to help break down those barriers and those blockages in order for us to help to shift into this higher dimension of consciousness, which is what what we're working towards. That's, you know, the step into the fifth dimension. That's and right. so it's I think it's that's that's really why I wanted you here on the show today, because, you know, there's so many people that are looking for tools. You know, we can I my guides are constantly telling, let go of the past, let go of the past, you know, empty the mind, the more simplistic the mind, you know, that's what you want, be in the present here and now the Buddha state. But how do you get there? And, <laughs> my, and my people ask me, my people, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> yes, you do. Information <laughs> with are constantly saying, well, how do you do that? But how do you do that? And of course, you know, my guides are like, well, you just let it go. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. well, sometimes it's not that easy. You know, it's sometimes not. we need some help. And I'm one of them. I mean, I have many different tools and I've used tapping before too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I feel like it's so important for people to understand that they're not on their own. Right. And they they don't have to suffer through this and they don't have to live with all of the chaos and the heartbreak and the drama and the lost feelings and all of this stuff. When we when we start transitioning into this new world, you know, it's nice to know that there's a support system out there and that there's tools that we can use to help process through. So it's not quite so traumatic and right. shifting through. So, you know, leading into, you know, there's the perfect little segue of nurturing your spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. um, so now that we've kind of cleared out some of our baggage, it also opens the door for our, our intuitiveness, our knowing, this information, the, the counsel, all of these things, the angel messages, the angel guidance. When, when we start clearing this stuff out, then we become more in tune with our gifts. Yes. And so once we start recognizing that these gifts are coming forward, how do you nurture them and how do you um, build them so that you don't go backwards and that you can actually become, I, I call it more intimate with, with these gifts, with our guides, with our soul. What do you use for those types of Mm -hmm. Thanks. And you made a very important point. Um, 
light workers especially need to be the first one on the table. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've got a ton of tools and but we got to be our best that we can be and present that to the world or with clients. And so that's where you have other peers that help you and and you're humble enough to just you know i've called you before and said lisa we need to talk i'm not getting through on this you know that i'm not letting them through and um so to me it's a matter of practice 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 like have a dedicated time even if you have to put it on your calendar get up 30 minutes early every morning or you know maybe you're do it on your lunch hour or something or set an appointment maybe just put an appointment in there council whatever you call that and it's just it's so it's as important as going to the dentist or your annual physical at the doctor and i do it on a daily basis at least once in the morning and i try to do it twice in the morning and the evening and then throughout the day when i need it but it's just that connection you just you've got to build that muscle and build those protocols and and build that language those symbols and how you interpret what they're trying to give you and to me, that's just a lifelong, been a lifelong study for me. And it's something I do on a continuous basis. And, and um, we can be given all the gifts in the world. I think we all, every soul has the potential to learn these things. It's a matter of, do I want to, do I have time and brain cells and all that to do it? Or is there chaos going in line? So the more I devote to that, the easier life gets and the less chaos is involved. And I have even more time to receive that yeah. and help more and more people. So when I'm really um, like in 12 step program, they say when you're working it, you know, when you work the program. So you have to work with this. You have to continue to build those muscles, yeah. spiritual muscles. Yeah, absolutely. So we um, we're I need to wrap this up. So I'm, I'm curious about what your what your final message, if you could tell your our listeners anything, what would you tell them? Everything. It, all is well. <laughs> everything is fine and it, it truly is and you know that there's that cliche about oh you won't be given anything that you can't do and to a certain extent i believe that that is true because um i think it's just that calling to the next step or that learning that thing you need to know that will get you through and just listening to that and be willing to at least take a look at it and uh, it's a self-paced program you can sit on it for as long as you want to yeah and that that's grace that they give you that time yeah. Yeah. I like all as well. I get that answer a lot. All as well. <laughs> Even though when it looks so, so crazy and chaotic and the world's turning upside down it all as well. It's just mm -hmm. how, how we perceive it and what our mind turns it into. And that shifts to that different vibration. Absolutely. It yeah. does. And yeah. then uh, if there's, uh, there are tools I have that help let things go. But if I need the quickie version of that, I just say they will be done. Yeah, <laughs> the quickie version. <laughs> I like no, it. no restrictions, no limitations. I just need some help. I like it. I like it. So, Monica, thank you so much for being here and all of your wisdom. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so just so because you, you do, we heard you very clearly say that you do sessions online. You can do mm -hmm. sessions by Zoom. So anybody in the whole world can contact you and, right. and you can have sessions with them. So how, how do people contact you? Well, I'm on Facebook. You'll see Monica Murray. And sometimes you have to put in my hometown, Jinx, J-E-N-K-S, Oklahoma. And you'll see my little picture and then a mermaid behind and that picture behind me. And so you can always send me a message or just use the phone and call me. My phone number's on there. And um, I'm kind of old school when it comes to that. However you want to get in touch and just, you know, when you reach out, make sure I get the message. And if I haven't gotten in touch with you that day, I try to call, return everything that day. But if not... Um, the next day for sure, try another method or, you know, send me another message or something because I, I was just out of town or I missed it or something. Okay. So Facebook is the only way that you don't have a website. Yeah, that's the best way because okay. a lot of people have that, but they can also just call me, you okay. know, on my phone. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll have the information in, in the comments or in the description to this. That's as great. Well. So, That's okay. So Monica, again, thank you so much for, for your time and we appreciate it. And I'll see all you guys next time. This is great, Lisa. Continued success. Thank you.